the world has always been dependent on minerals that we know, right? Like if you if you use uh, a, a spoon to eat your yogurt, <laughs> which is made of steel or aluminium, you're like, we, like, this is like, this is a product essentially from the mineral economy. But what we're facing at the moment with the decarbonization process and even more so with the twin, twin transition between digitalization and decarbonization is that the demand for critical raw materials is, is, is about to explode. Um, I take a few examples in, in the TED Talk extracted from different sources from the World Bank, the International Energy Agency, but you know, a, an electric car uses on average six times more material inputs than a conventional car. Um, the level of, you know, sort of electrification that we need for our grids requires nine, nine times more materials than we currently rely upon for our fossil um, infrastructure. Um, for certain types of materials, we're facing, you know, like a 500% increase in terms of demand by 2050. We're talking about graphite and lithium and that kind of thing, especially for the world of batteries and anything related to individual and collective mobility. So that has two combined effects. One is obviously that we'll have to dig deeper and in more places in the world in order to meet that demand. The ecological effects of digging deeper or digging in different parts of the world differ in terms of the type of material and the type of technologies that we use. But we have to be very clear that any type of mining is environmentally invas invasive, very water intensive, and tends to have very strong effects, which, some of which are fully known, some of which are less known in terms of air pollution, ecological pollution, and sort of, you know, disturbance to biodiversity of different kinds. And that will have, this is something that is not yet fully computed in terms of what are going to be the first, second, third hand effects, especially as climate disruptions come with full force at us, right? Especially regarding this, this, the use of water, we're sort of, at least as far as I'm aware, and I've asked, I've asked a number of different sort of experts and, 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 you know, mining actors, the notion of how, you know, climate impacts will uh, come and hit any type of given context where mining is taking place is not understood in terms of how it will affect the availability, quantity, and quality of water today, five years, 10, 40 years from now, and especially what the repercussions are going to be on local communities. So that's the ecological part. The geographical part is, um, and I invite you know all your listeners to actually sort of watch the TED Talk where I, I show sort of an overlap of different maps. If you look at um, the concentration of ore and deposits in the world for different types of min minerals that we need, and we need a lot of them, and a lot of different types of materials, we can see that they're actually located in Latin America, in Africa, in Central Asia, in the Indo-Pacific, um, and in you know some places in in Europe. And obviously, you've got also like the three, four big poles between China, Australia, Canada, and the U.S. And then you've got Greenland and the sort of Arctic, right? But I focus a bit less on on that because that's less of the issue when it relates essentially to high like densely populated um sort of uh countries but the part that i the reason that got me to really delve into this topic is that when you look at the overlay of data you find that the deposits are located in com in in contexts which score very high in terms of corruption indices in terms of fragility indices, in terms of water stress, in terms of climate vulnerability, which are all foundations essentially for anything going bad. And, and those things Unless, are happening now, not in yes, the future. They're happening now. Absolutely. And they are, you know, like it's one thing. So maybe one additional thing, one additional layer of complexity. It's, it would already be bad if it were happening in a world where geopolitical tensions were not running that high, because we would still have a number of different sort of, you know, um, extractive companies sort of, you know, going into different places where governance systems and the application of certain standards around environmental, social and governance standards are not very strong. But the dangers are that much higher as a result of the sort of power systems fragmentation at a geopolitical, geoeconomic and geostrategic level. 
because when you look at the fact that a number of supply chain sort of both from extraction to processing, refining and exportation are located in China or in Russia, um, and that this is the backbone essentially of the system's rivalry and the way in which power sort of redistribution or competition of power over power is taking shape, then you realize essentially that you've got different models actively sort of competing in those countries with disastrous environmental, social and governance effects.